to those who have hope in the Kingdom of Heaven, to all pastors, seminary students, and congregation members around the world, greetings. I am Kim Bumjin, a center instructor among the 12 tribes who learned the word from the Thaddeus tribe leader. Our tribe leader was taught by Shincheonji chairman Lee Man Hee. For attending the Shincheonji online seminar, Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings, I truly would like to thank you for attending. Through this seminar, I am confident that you will have a meaningful time to perceive the true meaning of parables, secrets of heaven, and their reality. I would like to reiterate one important point. The words of the secret of heaven should not be understood literally, but the true meaning of the parables should be known. You must know. The title of today's lecture is Lesson 5, The Figurative Food and Yeast. In the Bible, there are two kinds of food and yeast. First, there is physical food and physical yeast. This food is what we eat every day to sustain life. Also, in the history of the Bible, we can think about the manna that was given from heaven to the Israelites who left Egypt during Moses' time. Also, yeast has the characteristic of leavening and changing something. What then is the figurative food and yeast using the characteristics of their physical aspects? Many pastors already know this, However, I would appreciate if you would listen carefully when I testify one more time. I will give you the answer to the parables. First, what is figurative food? This means the word. Also, what is the yeast that changes something? It means teachings or instructions. Now, let's find out through the Bible why the answer of these parables came out this way. Then, let's turn together to the main reference for today's parable, Matthew 24, 45 to 47, and let's read. Who then is the faithful and wise servant? whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time. It would be good for that servant who master finds him doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. If one looks at the words of Matthew 24, 3 to 7, read in the main reference concerning this parable topic, it says that wars and famines are among the signs of the second coming. At this time of famine, there is a faithful and wise servant put in charge of the servants in the household to give them the food at the proper time. This servant will be blessed when the master comes. The master here refers to Jesus. In the time when the master comes, refers to the time of the Lord's second coming. Also, the servant of the master refers to the true shepherd. The master's house is the church of God, and the servants in the household refer to saints. But then, why does it say that the servant will be blessed when the master comes? At the time of famine, he gives the food at the proper time. So he will be blessed, right? Beloved saints, then what does this food and famine signify? Is it talking about physical famine and physical food? If so, wouldn't it be a situation that our pastors not only preach the word at church, but also have to give food to feed their congregation members? I hope through this time you can clearly understand what kind of food this food is. 
Just as it is very important for us to eat physical food, we should know this even more clearly, because it is a matter of life or death. First, just as our body needs to eat the physical food to live, our spirit needs to hear the word of life, the food of the spirit, to live. Just like food is essential to sustain life, the word that is necessary for our spirit to live is compared to food. Also, among the physical food, there is good food for our health and for our life, and there's also harmful food to our health and to our life. It is the same for spiritual food. Likewise, there is God's food that makes our spirit live, and there is Satan's food that makes our spirit die. Why are there two types of spiritual food? It is because, as you heard before, there are two entities in the spiritual world, God and Satan. Therefore, the spiritual food is also divided into two kinds. I'm sure you understand well about this. So then what is the spiritual food God gives? If you look at Jeremiah 15 verse 16, it says, When your words came, I ate them. They are my joy and my heart's delight. As we can see from eating the word of God, the Bible compares the word to food. Isn't that so? Physical food is what we eat with our mouth, but spiritual food, the Word, is what we eat by listening with our ears. Then, why is God's Word compared to food in this way? To find out, let's read Isaiah 55, 1-3 together. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. God says, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. Buy the true food that God gives, wine and milk, even without cost. But this food is not physical food, wine and milk. Verse 3 says, Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. That's what's recorded. What we give our ears to eat and hear so that our spirit can live is the Word of God. Isn't it the Word of God? So, God's Word is compared to water wine, and also compared to milk. Now, what did he say would happen if we listen to these words? It says the soul will live. Isn't that right? Just as the food for the body keeps the body alive, the Word of God that we listen with our ears allows our spirit to live. Therefore, this is why God's Word is compared to food. Then, what was God's food that enabled people's spirits to live at the time of the, Jesus' first coming? Let's take a look at the food of life at the first coming. Let's read the words of John 6, verses 48 to 51. Let's read this together. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. 
If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Jesus said that I am the bread of life. And your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But he who eats the bread of life, which is Jesus himself, will live forever, he said. And in verse 53 and following, it is said that we must eat the flesh and blood of Jesus to have eternal life. But how can we eat the flesh and blood of Jesus? How can we do that? Does it literally mean to drink Jesus' blood and eat his flesh? It does not. It's not about physical flesh and blood. Jesus said that one must listen to the word of Jesus to have life. In John 6, verse 63, he said, The Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. Furthermore, in verse 68, Peter, Jesus' disciple, confessed, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Like this, Jesus is teaching us the importance of spiritual food. In John 6, verse 27, Jesus said, Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life. If we eat this food, we will live eternally. Isn't that right? Food for eternal life? Do you have anything that comes to your mind? Yes. Didn't it say in Genesis 3, verse 22, that if one eats from the tree of life, he will live forever? Through this food, God gives the hope of eternal life that no human being could achieve. I hope that we can all perceive once again how precious the figurative food of God, the word of life, is to us. Let's understand, it would be good. Therefore then, what is this food of life we should eat today? First, let's examine the daily bread from the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. In Matthew 6, verse 11, Jesus told us to pray, Give us today our daily bread. Dear saints, what were you thinking when you recited the Lord's Prayer? Haven't you thought that it was about physical food? I did when I didn't know. However, in Matthew 6, 31 to 32, it says, Seeking physical food, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? That is something that, that pagans do. They are the ones that seek after those kind of things. So, it says not to seek physical food. Then, what is the daily bread in the Lord's Prayer that we should ask for? Is it physical food? No. It is telling us to seek food for the Spirit. Especially at this appointed time today. Also, at the end time, He is telling us to pray to be granted to eat the food. Because at the end time, just as in today's parable scripture, the 24, there is supposed to be a famine. Then, what is this famine taking place in the end times? To find this out, let's read together the words of Amos chapter 8, verse 11. The days are coming, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Amos 8 verse 11 prophesied that the days are coming when a famine would come upon the land. However, this is not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but referring to the coming of famine of hearing the words of God, a spiritual famine. 
Just as the figurative food is the spiritual food, the famine at the last day is also a spiritual famine. But when you think about it, isn't it strange? The Word of God, which is the food of the Spirit, has been spread more widely throughout the world over time. Nowadays, if you go to a Christian bookstore, it is full of spiritual food. So why did he say that famine is coming? We can understand the reason when we read the words of Isaiah 29, 11-13. It says, the vision, the prophecy, is like words sealed in a scroll, so no one can understand, neither the intelligent nor the ignorant. However, also it says, they come near to God with their mouth and honor Him with their lips, but their hearts are far from God. In this way, people are not learning the teaching of God, but instructing and learning only men's teaching. Furthermore, if we look at the New Testament prophecy, Revelation 5, verses 1 to 3, there's a scroll in God's hand, and it is sealed with seven seals. The problem is that no one in heaven or on earth can open this scroll or even look inside it. So then, what is this sealed book? It is the words of Revelation that has been spread for 2,000 years as sealed with parables and seven seals. Then how have we been living a life of faith up until now? Wasn't it like a dark night because we didn't know God's will? Many theories and commentaries created by men's thoughts unfortunately have prevailed. In the midst of this, haven't we carried out a blind faith? If that's the case, can't we say that today is a time of famine? Then, what should we do at this time of spiritual famine? Shouldn't we be looking for and seeking that food at the proper time? Once again, let's go over the key points of today's parable verses. First, what is the food at the proper time mentioned in Matthew 24? the food a believer must eat at the second coming. That is the word. Second, the servant, the true shepherd, who, who is this? We must know who that is. At the time of the spiritual famine, as said in Matthew 24, verse 7, the food at the proper time that will be given and it's something that we must absolutely eat. We have examined the Bible, and if we categorize the Bible by its content, it can be divided into history, moral teaching, instructions, and prophecy. The content which has a certain time to be fulfilled is prophecy. The food given at the proper time is the word of prophecy and testimony of its fulfillment when the prophecy is fulfilled. When the prophecy is fulfilled, are we supposed to hear the fulfillment and know? Let's call this the word of revelation or the revealed word. Revelation means to open and show in Chinese characters. The prophecy, sealed with parables, is now fulfilled and reality has appeared. So it is no longer a secret, and the revealed word is testified. So we must understand that this word is the true food that we eat that saves us today. We also believe that this food is the daily bread in the Lord's Prayer that we have to ask for today. Next. Let's find out who the faithful and wise servant who gives the food at the proper time is. To find this out, let's read Revelation 2, verse 17 together. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, 
I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. In Revelation 2, verse 17, Jesus promised to give the hidden manna to him who overcomes at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation. The hidden manna is food, that is, the Word. So far, it has been sealed. This is referring to the words of the secret of heaven hidden in parables. Today, as the prophecy of Revelation has been fulfilled and the actual reality has been revealed, the seal word has been opened. It was hidden in parables and then opened. So we can call it the word of Revelation or the revealed word. Also, this is the food given at the proper time from Matthew 24. To whom did Jesus promise he would give this food? He said he would give it to the one who overcomes. Then, who is this overcomer? Whom did he fight and overcome? You will hear in more detail later, but this refers to the overcomer who fought against Satan's group and overcame. The overcomer receives the hidden manna and eats it. Isn't this manna the food that comes down from heaven? If you look at the words of Revelation 10, there's an open scroll coming from heaven, and we can see the new John in Revelation 10 receiving the scroll and eating it. Therefore, wouldn't this new John become the overcomer who receives and eats the hidden manna? Also, in Revelation 22, 16, New John who received this open scroll and ate it is referred to as the messenger Jesus sent to the churches. Pastors and believers around the world, do you think this faithful and wise servant who gives food at the proper time, otherwise known as the one who overcomes, the New John who received and ate the hidden manna, the messenger of Jesus has appeared? If he has appeared, shouldn't we have to find and meet this shepherd? I sincerely hope that all of you who are listening to these words will surely meet the faithful and wise servant, eat this precious food at the proper time together, and achieve our hope. So far, we have looked at the food of God. Next, let's look at Satan's food. There is also food from Satan that we must absolutely never eat. First, in Proverbs 4, verse 17, and Malachi 1, verse 7, there is bread of wickedness and food that is defiled. Bread is bread, but it says bread of wickedness. This bread of wickedness means it is not righteous. Is there any bread that is unrighteous among physical bread? This must be spiritual bread, right? It is spiritual food. Among the spiritual food, it is speaking of Satan's food. Then, what is Satan's food? Since God's food was God's word, the truth, Satan's food would be the opposite then. It would be Satan's words, that is, untruth. At the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, as it says in Revelation 17 and 18, all nations will fall because of the wine of adulteries. Is there any wine called wine of adulteries among physical wine? This is also spiritual food. Since it says wine of adulteries, it is Satan's food that is untruth. It is called the wine of adulteries because, like the commentary doctrines, worldly things are mixed with the words of Jesus. If we talk about this in light of the time of Genesis, it can be called the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, mixture of good and evil. Therefore, we must become those who can discern spiritual food well based on the Bible. 
we must clearly discern what is God's food and what is Satan's food. Shouldn't we do that? So, how can you discern them? Let's read the words of Job 34, verses 3 to 4 together. For the ear tests words, as the tongue tastes food. Let us discern for ourselves what is right. Let us learn together what is good. Yes, in the words you just read, it says the ear tests words, just as the tongue tastes food. We must first understand the words of the Bible very well. By using this Bible as a standard, we can listen to the words that are testified and discern them. I hope that all of you can discern well what is the true food that we have to eat in this time and eat the food of life at the proper time and reach salvation. Next, let's take a look at the figurative yeast. First, let's read the parable from Matthew 13, verse 33, together. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a yeast that woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. In Matthew 13, verse 33, it says the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. First, the physical characteristics of this yeast or that it causes something to rise and also changes things. Looking at how the kingdom of heaven is figuratively compared to yeast, it means that we must change in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. So first, we need to know what is this figurative yeast. And furthermore, we must strive to be changed. In the main passage, it says that a woman took and mixed the yeast into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. What does this mean? In Galatians 4 verse 19, a pastor like Paul compared himself to a woman. Thus, a figurative woman means a pastor. Also, a vessel or a container refers to a person's heart. This is the content you will hear next time. In other words, doesn't this mean that a pastor, figured to be referred to as a woman, put yeast in people's hearts and made them rise? Now, let's find out what's most important in this passage, which is the true meaning of the yeast. Let's read Matthew 16, verses 6 up to verse 12 together. Be careful, Jesus said to them, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They discussed this among themselves and said, It is because we didn't bring any bread. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked, You of little faith, why are you talking among yourselves about having no bread? Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for the five thousand? and how many basketfuls you gathered, or the seven loaves for the four thousand, and how many basketfuls you gathered. How is it you don't understand that I was not talking to you about bread, but be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Then they understood that he was not telling them to guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Jesus told his disciples to be on their guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees, who were false pastors at that time. The disciples at that time thought of yeast from physical bread. However, Jesus wasn't talking about that. He was talking about spiritual things. He was talking about being on their guard against the teachings of false pastors. What were their teachings that Jesus told them to be careful? In Luke 12, verse 1, it says that the yeast of the Pharisees is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy means to decorate the outside, which means their teaching was hypocritical, just to show off on the outside. 
The reason he said this was, just like Isaiah 29, verse 13, they taught only the teachings of men without knowing the commandments of God. And they were also steeped in traditions of men. So, if one accepts these teachings, he will turn into a superficial believer who follows people's commandments without even realizing. That is why Jesus told his disciples to beware of their yeast. Let's summarize the content simply. Spiritual yeast means teachings that change people's hearts and changes their spirits. Then, how many types of this spiritual yeast are there? Just as there are two kinds of spiritual food, there are also two kinds of spiritual yeast. That is God's yeast and Satan's yeast. God's yeast transforms our hearts into the likeness of God. And Satan's yeast deteriorates and corrupts our hearts into the likeness of Satan. From now on, let's check these types, two types of yeast through the Bible. First, looking at Mark 1, 21-22, when Jesus taught the word in Capernaum in Galilee, everyone was amazed at Jesus' teaching. It is written because his teaching was not like that of the teachers of the law. First of all, it says in Mark 1, verse 27, Jesus' teaching was like a new teaching with authority. In other words, we can see that there is Satan's yeast from false pastors, like the teachers of the law and Pharisees, and there's a new teaching that Jesus gives that is the new yeast, which is the yeast of the kingdom of heaven. Satan's yeast is called in 1 Corinthians 5 verse 8, malicious and wicked, and is also called old yeast. This means that these are teachings or instructions taught through men's teachings steeped in traditions. Next, we'll find out how and through what we can be transformed through Ephesians 4 verses 21 up to verse 24. It says how we must put off our old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of our minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God, in true righteousness and in holiness. This means that there is also the yeast of truth, God's yeast, which can transform us into a new self. However, there are teachings that you should never hear. Let's read Proverbs 19, verse 27, three together. Stop listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. Stop listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. This scripture shows us how there are God's words of knowledge that we need to hear, but there are also teachings that lead us away from God's word. In other words, isn't this saying that there is also Satan's yeast that we should be careful of? Also, at time of the second coming of the Lord, there is the yeast of Satan, the yeast of untruth, as mentioned, in Revelation chapter 2, verses 14 to 15. Therefore, if you are a believer living the time of the second coming of the Lord today, you must know what this yeast is. You must discern it very well. If we put it together once again, God's yeast is God's teaching. And if we accept it, our hearts will be changed into God's likeness and image. In contrast, Satan's yeast is Satan's teaching. And if you accept it, your heart will be changed into Satan's likeness and image. The teachings or instructions that change our hearts are called yeast. 
Depending on whose and what kind of teachings or instructions we receive, it will determine in which image we will change. Therefore, we must receive God's yeast. Then, who was the true shepherd who changed people's hearts through God's yeast at the first coming? Also, who is the true shepherd who can change our hearts at the second coming? Next, let's summarize this yeast of the kingdom of heaven and true shepherds at the time of the first and second comings. First of all, the true shepherd who changed people's hearts with God's yeast at the first coming was Jesus. Also, the teachings that Jesus delivered were the yeast of the kingdom of heaven. That was the testimony to the reality of the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. And through the testimony, the disciples of Jesus were able to be born again as children of the kingdom of heaven. Next is the time of the Lord's second coming. First, looking at Luke 17, 26 to 30, it says that the time of the Lord's second coming will be like the days of Noah and Lot. Therefore, just like in those days in biblical history, even at the second coming of the Lord today, there are only a few people who believe and are saved. Shouldn't we listen to the teachings, that is, the yeast of the kingdom of heaven in order to receive salvation today? First of all, the true shepherd who testifies to these things at the second coming will be the faithful and wise servant that Jesus spoke of in today's main passage, the messenger of Jesus sent for the churches. Therefore, we must listen to the teachings that are testified through this shepherd. These are the words of Revelation that testify to the prophecies of the New Testament and the fulfillment. These words become the yeast of heaven that enables us to be reborn as children of heaven today. What kind of heart should we have when we hear these teachings of the kingdom of heaven? Yes, we must have a heart to change and be born again. If there's something that I knew wrong, and did wrong in my life of faith, I must boldly throw away what is wrong and accept the truth and be changed anew. With such courage and faith, I sincerely hope that you will become those who reach the hope of heaven. Now, let's summarize today's lesson. First of all, God's food is the word of truth that makes our spirit live. However, Satan's food is the word of false truth that kills our spirit. Therefore, using the Bible, we must distinguish between these two things. Also, more importantly, there is the food at the proper time that we must eat at the second coming of the Lord, which will be the word of Revelation that testifies to the prophecies of Matthew 24 and the book of Revelation and the reality that has been fulfilled according to those prophecies. Today is the time when prophecies are being fulfilled. Now, we believe that we must listen to the words of Revelation that are opened in time. this time. They are no longer sealed with parables. Also, there's a faithful and wise servant who delivers this precious food. That is the promised shepherd, one who overcomes the new John, who testifies to the word of this revelation. We believe that we must meet this shepherd. Next is the yeast of God. This is God's teaching or truth that transforms us into the likeness of God and causes us to be born again. But Satan's yeast is the untruth that transforms us into the image of the devil. We also need to perceive this well and be able to discern it. I believe that if you attend the following seminars and listen carefully, you'll be able to distinguish between God's and Satan's. Pastors, seminary students, and believers who are listening to this right now, 
The purpose and hope of our faith is heaven and eternal life. Then today, we must meet the faithful and wise servant Jesus promised in the New Testament, the true shepherd, and take the word of revelation given at the proper time as real food and make an effort to be surely transformed through God's yeast to be a new self so we can reach the kingdom of heaven. The next subject will be well taught by another instructor. He will give you a more interesting and clear lecture than what I did. Please look forward to the next lecture. I hope you will listen well. Now finally, in the sense that we are one in God and in Jesus, I would like to shout, we are one together. When I say we are one, please raise your finger like this and shout together. We are one in God and in Jesus. We are one. Thank you. This is the end of the testimony. Let us pray to God. Thank you, Father God, whom we are grateful for. At this precious time today, you allowed us to live with the word of revelation given at the proper time through the faithful and wise servant promised in the Bible. Thank you so very much for this. Satan and the devil will try to deceive us with their own things to interfere with God's work, but please help us to understand God's word well and discern so we can all become God's belongings. Please help us. We also desire that we will be transformed through the teaching of this precious word of yeast given through the true shepherd today. Help us to be born again into the perfect image and likeness of God. Please be with us during the remaining online seminars and help many people to attend and receive much grace. Please help us. Thank you for everything. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening until the end.